guys, how's it going? Welcome to the Shoes with Biscuit podcast. It's me, Alex Whiteley, and I'm with my co-host today, Amy. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. We're doing our first like, in-person interview as, as, as a biscuitier because we've done everything else over StreamYard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have. Yeah. I'm just getting used to hearing headphones. Your hearing your voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's a terrible ordeal. How dare <laughs> I put through this, you know? <laughs> today we're, we're in St. Mary's um, and we want to talk a bit about community and sort of like what how important places like churches and St. Mary are to, to community because I've been covering a lot of events lately and in fact this is really nice to actually sit down and have a very calm quiet conversation rather than over music or like vox pox in, you know uh, so this is really nice um, but a lot of the events I, I, I cover are at churches or at pivotal communal, community sort of spaces um, so I want to talk about what St. Mary's is doing and sort of any ideas we've got and today we're speaking to Robert Milton who if you have done the So Stories uh, voice tour of St. Mary's you'll recognise his voice oh gosh that's frightening yeah I do need to get you a little bit closer to this microphone there Robert here we go there he is today <laughs> How are you? You good? I'm well, thanks. It's yeah. Friday, so that's a bonus. Yeah, it's the weekend soon. And I've got like two days off this weekend, which is great. It's, very it's not rare. like you. No, I know. I know. Um, well, it was a mistake, really. I thought I had a movie premiere to go to uh, tomorrow. Got the date wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It's, As you do, Alex. Um, well, it's, it's reduced to clear who we've, we've been following with Luke, young director Luke Allen, um, and he's invited us to the, the, the premiere, which is cool. Which is cool. But I, I thought it was tomorrow is next week, and we had a discussion last night about my di- me and my diary. It's not my diary. My diary is fine. Is there so much happening in Shrewsbury? It's hard to stay on top of things, right? It's getting better. <laughs> that, that's a real positive for Shrewsbury. It, it is positive. He's just fishing for me to be his PA. That's uh, what's going no, on here. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, you're worth more than that. No, I don't know. I think if somebody does want to sort of help us out keeping our diary together, then that'd be great. But I, I, I feel bad doing asking someone to do that for free. Do you know what I mean? So I just take it all on. Do you know what I mean? And then make mistakes. It Come, comes with coffee and biscuits. It's a bribe. <laughs> coffee yeah. and biscuits. That sounds great. That sounds great. Um, so, how long have you been working here at St. Mary's? Gosh, I've what been. What is your role? Uh, uh, effectively, I've been in St. Mary's now for some 14 years, but I cover part of a region. Um, Shrewsbury is based in the North region. Uh, as an organisation, we look after Grade 1 and Grade 2 star-listed churches that are no longer required for worship. So effectively, you look at the historic England, they look after castles. Look at us, we look after ca- churches no longer required for worship. And currently we have an estate of some 370 churches and wow, 11 in Shropshire alone. So what does that mean, not required for worship? Does that mean that you don't do services here or you know, don't have to? Yeah. No, basically... Um, The churches that we care for, the congregation was no longer viable, so they couldn't afford to look after the church. But because it's of specific interest to the nation, it goes through a process where the Church of England speaks to various organisations, and then eventually we get to the, the point where the church is vested with ourselves. We then take it on and we look to engage with local communities. So the local community then look at us and, and really... It's, it's aimed primarily at getting people to understand these are absolutely fantastic heritage buildings. Yes. That yes. Let's, they were there for a purpose which was to deliver a religion. Yeah. Okay. But in between time, they were community spaces. But the history and the community engagement with these buildings is fantastic. Mm. You look at Shrewsbury St. Mary's, first church here, most likely in the ninth century. So we're looking at the best part of 1,200 years of locals coming into this church to engage with it in some shape or form and that wasn't necessarily praying it was a great gossip shop <laughs> we love a gossip shop don't we oh yeah yeah we do so coffee shops now isn't it like actual coffee shops you know. yeah. so i didn't realize that that there are no services in saint mary's under um, our vesting, we're permitted a maximum of six services a year. Okay. Um, we still have some fantastic associations. Um, part of the church was formed part of the first uh, grammar school in the town. So we have an association with Shrewsbury School who come for the Founders Day service mm-hmm. when we shoehorn the best part of 850 people <coughs> into the building, wow. which is absolutely staggering. Yeah. Um, we're also associated with Shrewsbury Drapers Company who have been given their charter for trade with wool. They were also obliged to build a part of a chapel to the church and then pay for a priest to pray on behalf of the king and those affluent in the area. And we still have those links. Um, Drapers still have their textile 
competition here on an annual basis, which is absolutely fantastic because it celebrates what they're about. And I think you're linked with the university as well, aren't you? We, we work with the university. Yeah. It's very much a case of we, we've got a couple of contacts down there and, and we're here to be used. It's, mm. it's a wonderful opportunity to actually come in and read history. Um, the church was, I, I will say, fortunate. So a lot of people will say it's unfortunate, but in the 1820s, the last of the plaster work was removed off the walls. Now, in doing so, you can actually see the stonework and you can see how the church developed. You can see each successive build, the extensions, the additions to the building. You can read that stonework and it tells the story of the building. Wow, yeah. For the listeners that, you know, have never been to St Mary's, maybe you, you, you lived far away, uh, I don't know, but I mean, like, you know, we do have listeners in America, um, Russia as well. Hi, guys, in Russia. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening to the show. Um, <laughs> That's just what I know. It's just what, but, you know, if you don't look at it, it does look like you very much walked onto a set of, I don't know, Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. It's stonework, beautiful architecture. Uh, and that's why I love coming places like this, because there is historic, uh, beautiful significance here. And just, you can just sit here and just lock up and just enjoy yeah. it, you know. And I get really sentimental about stuff like that. I love it. it, it it's, it's absolutely staggering. I, I mean, I look after 22 sites across the top of the Midlands, um, over four counties and each one is slightly different in its own way you, you have what is Shrewsbury were, wanted desperately to be a mini cathedral Henry VIII actually offers Shrewsbury city status but come city status you've got to pay an extra tax Shrewsbury folk don't do extra taxes so they decline the offer but then we go to the extreme number of the churches that I've got are the size of a living room they're just the remains of something bigger but they've still got that link to a community, which is staggering. Um, and for, 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 the, for the listeners at home that are, are not aware, me and Robert have been working together for the past sort of, 18 months, yeah, yeah. possibly two years. Um, we've been working together to sort of like, when, when lockdown happened, we're looking at creative ways in how to bring the church to people's homes without them having to come out. And uh, one of the things we did is I recorded some organ music. Yes. I remember that. Yep. Um, that was really nice, I, I, and I, I was very proud of how that came out because I had, to, I had to really think about how to do it. I'm not a music engineer or a sound engineer, so we, these mics are very, they're very, um, very sort of sensitive, yep. um, and they're very, you know, if you put too much gain on them, you can hear the insects crawling through the wall. So I was just like, how am I going to do this? And, and we made, the, we recorded the music, and it sounded beautiful, um, but. These are the things you work on, right? You look on ways to be innovative and to, to make the churches useful. Right? It, it, it is. Ultimately, it, it's um, at the end of the day, you've got to pay for a restoration. You've got to pay for the care of a building. And, and when you're looking after historic buildings, you can't pop down to the local DIY store and buy something <laughs> off the shelf. Mm. Um, even you with Dan Wicks and get some uh, MDF. <laughs> it, it'd, be, it'd be wonderful if we could. Um, yeah. But even if you just want a simple stone replacing, First and foremost, you've got to bring in specialist people because if you take that stone out, the potential is the rest of the stonework may crumble around it. But then it can take up to two days for a stonemason to actually carve the stone. So wow. again, that comes at a phenomenal cost. And because they come at such a high cost of maintenance, we have to look at a way of generating income. So particularly with St. Mary's, we hold events. Uh, we had a, an absolute outstanding concert last night with the oh. Symphony of Birmingham mm. Orchestra, the strings, and that was absolutely tremendous. And churches effectively were built for two purposes. One was to worship in, and the other was to celebrate music. And if and you go the back to the medieval sticks. period, the chanting and everything else that would have been associated with was absolutely extraordinary. But it is something that just makes the hairs on the back of your neck go up when you hear it. Yeah. Do you think that um, we need to make it a little bit cooler um, so that the community, the, our generation and generations below us, don't fear walking through the doors of a church? I'm not even touching on the religion fear, but we need to keep making it relevant, don't we? Because I know my son, or maybe my daughters, wouldn't. it would never occur for them to walk into these doors but we need them to to keep the community going to keep these beautiful buildings going don't we and make them relevant I, I, th I think it's absolutely fascinating the growth in family history over the last 20 years possibly yeah. 30 years has been amazing uh -huh. now a church gives you that family history 
that's there on the walls. There's memorials yeah. that celebrate potentially the affluent of an area, but also those who had achieved something. You, you will go into a church and you will, most churches will have a roll of honour for some war or the other, be it the Second World War, the Korean War, First World War, colonial wars behind, before that. They will have a roll of honour. And that's where, and I, and I use the term very lightly, the great unwashed, which was the workers of the world, we will be on those rolls. And it's that celebration of an individual because regardless of whether you are a supporter of armies going to war or whatever, somebody sacrifices themselves yeah. on your behalf, whether they want to willingly, we, we won't go there, but they've made a sacrifice and they deserve celebrating, but there's a fantastic story and it's linked to the local community. And people need to be able to come into these buildings and actually see this. Yet, it's a church, it was for worship, stained glass. I, I tell to a lot of children who I speak to, I get the Beano annual every year. <laughs> and I have since I was a kid because I, like I love the Beano. Yeah. And on Christmas morning, I will be stuck in a corner somewhere giggling. <laughs> and and it, it sounds ridiculous. It's, it's no, the simple, it's the child in me still. But the reason I love the Beano it's because it's cartoons. It's a cartoon strip with little mm. speech bubbles. You look at a lot of stained glass, and they're doing exactly the same you thing. You explain this to me. You explain it. Yeah. blew my mind. I was, I was like, so are stained glass windows the first comic books? And you're like, kind of, yeah. yeah it, it's yeah. telling a story. You, you, yeah. you have to go back, and I'll keep referring to the medieval period. In fact, it, you could honestly say it continued to a degree, even into modern times. People can't read and write. How do you tell a story to somebody who can't read or write? Fantastic, you use images. And that's what churches were. Prior to, well, in fact, really, I suppose you can go beyond Henry VIII. So many churches had the stories painted on the walls. Some churches still retain those images. And they are absolutely mind-blowing. But that's how they told the story. And that's that fantastic link that you have to communities again because that's that way of learning. And it comes back to the Beano. That's why comics are so simplistic. Church windows are very simplistic. Just take a fresh yeah. look at them. Well, I'm sat here now, <clears throat> surrounded by them, and um, I probably end up drifting off occasionally in this interview now because <laughs> I'm going to just be looking at them. You're right. They are exactly what you've said. They're beautiful paintings that tell a story. Um, but sometimes we forget to look up, don't we, nowadays? We, we do. We we'll pay attention to the smaller details. Yeah, we're yeah. so busy yeah. looking yeah. 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 down uh, that, yeah. It, it's again, you know, it, it's, we talk about a church and we say, right, this is where people came to worship. If, uh, you know, and, and forgive me, I'm going to refer to the medieval period again. Some people travelled miles to go to church on Sunday because they had to go to church. It was going to be their saving in the afterlife. Yeah. They were moving on to bigger and better things. They were going to move away from the, the horrid life that they were experiencing. But when you come to a church, look very closely at it and you'll see witches' marks because they were absolutely terrified of evil. And by putting marks not only on churches, on houses, it was to keep evil spirits from coming into the building where you were. And then you have gargoyles. I absolutely I love gargoyles. Love, love a gargoyles. good gargoyle. We, yeah. we have a fabulous, he's not so much a gargoyle, he's most likely the head of a Norman knight at one of the, the entrances to the porch. He's still got a steel helmet, you can still see the remains of a helmet on his head. But the lovely thing about it, he's poking his tongue out at so right. as you come into the church, you're just getting this chap poking his tongue. I mean, it might be that he was a Maori. It might be the associated with New Zealand. Who knows? Perhaps we taught them the trick. I'm not sure. But he's hmm. there being rude. And a lot of gargoyles are designed either to ward off evil spirits, to make fun of others, or just simply to be rude. And some churches, if you look high enough, you will see some absolutely wonderful rude images. So maybe a gargoyle tour of Shrewsbury would be a cool thing to do, to get, you know, the 12-year-old boys. I'm speaking as a mum of a 12-year-old boy who just would find this, why are you taking me to the ground of church, or... Why are you taking me to an event in a church? But already I want to go out and see this rude gargoyle. <laughs> and I want to look up and I want to find every gargoyle. And 
that would be an amazing thing to do, wouldn't it? It, it, is, it, it is, it's part of exploration, and, yeah. and children love it. Yeah. Well, I'm excited, and yeah. I'm definitely yeah. not a child. <laughs> but um, I know that... Sorry. No, you're right. You're um, why I brought you on the show. I go a little bit off topic, <laughs> and um, poor Alex. No, no, um, no, I love this. What's a witch's mark? Witch's marks can be a number of, or a number of different types, styles of images. There might be a circle might be a series of cross lines but a lot of it a lot of houses um when houses were created you might put an item such as a boot over a doorway and it was all there to ward off evil because people were terrified mm. of what could happen to them and they felt safe in their buildings but they had to have something there to make them feel safe right that's interesting isn't it but you've got to look well i feel quite it. relieved that i walked past the witch's mark so <laughs> clearly i'm i'm cool so, I'm amy not. wasn't like engulfed in a <laughs> horse yeah. field as she walked through Here that I am, get. not bursting into flames <laughs> yeah we do, we, we do have a sign outside which says <laughs> pop your broomstick up here <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, there was a, an interesting thing that happened a few years ago kevin smith director released a movie called Dogma, and it was very much hated by the, the American uh, sort of congregations over there because it was this idea that you, you walk into this church and all your sins were forgotten, and there was Loki and, and Bert Bartleby, um, the, the two uh, fallen angels, they were going to walk into church, be uh, forgiven for their sins, and enter heaven, prove God wrong, and all existence would fail. Right? So, and the Christians, they hated it, hated it. Um, uh, but they created the Buddy Christ. It's very iconic. Um, if you're listening to this now, you don't know what I'm talking about. Google the Buddy Christ, and you'll see this image, this, this statue of, the, of Jesus Christ smiling at uh, with a thumbs up it's very iconic um, so you know, have people tried to try and make the, the church a, 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 you know hip and try and get young folks in through the door that isn't uh, so controversial like Kevin Smith <laughs> I, I, I don't think it is and equally you, you do have um, quite large numbers of young Christians who like to worship in their own way they, they don't like the tradition of the Church of England it, it's they want to do things their way. It's a modern way of vision. Yes. It, it was the, it, if, if we had the birth of Christ today, I would imagine that uh, there, there'd be a mass of Twitter and Facebook going on. It, it would be a completely different approach to how it would be celebrated. But equally, you have these fantastic buildings that have wonderful associations that need exploring and need explaining. Yes. So we, we're always appealing to volunteers. Don't come and so much and stand in a freezing cold church, although it'd be fantastic if, you, if you're willing to do that and <laughs> greet our visitors. That's wonderful. But equally, there's so much history yeah. that needs telling. And it's really, really fantastic to get young eyes, new vision of how it's delivered. History, tragically, is sort of tends to be presented by an older element with fixed views, fixed ideas... Yeah. But a new, fresh way of looking at it. Let's listen to it. Let's explore it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I won't mention his name, but I was speaking to a young Christian a while ago, uh, and I was talking about bo the dogma, actually. And he's like, I love that film. I love it. I love the earlier um, of it. And uh, I'm, I'm he's a devout Christian, you know. And we're talking about a lot of LGBTQ stuff as well. And he's kind of like, no, no, I'm very accepting of that too. I don't understand the hate, you know. And it's, it's, it's very nice to see those refreshing young views. And he, he is young, you know what I mean? Like, so, um, yeah, we need a bit more of that. But, you know, that aside, that aside, um, there, are, there are things, like I said, Shrewsbury's a party town. There's lots going on. You've got to pay the bills, keep the place warm. And that goes for a lot of community places around Shrewsbury, like this place, like um, the Unitarian Church, like the Abbey, like the Cathedral. There's, there's so many things that's going on. And, you know, churches are the best places to utilise for they, gatherings, right? Oh, they're, they're fantastic. They are venues. So, although a lot of people might not like the use of that word, they mm. are venues. They, they're here. You can perform music. Tomorrow we have a, a Christmas fair in the building, and it works oh, nice. so very well. But it, it's... It works in the church. I know we, we had a beer festival um, a couple of years ago. I got very drunk by accident. I, I sincerely hope not. <laughs> no, I mean, um, I, there's a lot of the audio I had to throw away because I couldn't use, because it was very shouty, shouty, Mikey, Mikey, Dan, you know. I came to a cup of tea festival. Did you? <laughs> no, no, of course I didn't. <laughs> but, but if you go back again through history, there used to be a Saints' Day when the priests would brew their mead and actually sell it in the church. You could come and get as drunk as a lord. All that was required, you paid like for it, same. and you came for absolution the following morning. 
hey, let's bring it back. I'm all in favour of a Saints Day that celebrates beer. I went to uh, Abbey Fest um, the weekend, uh, and it was all in aid of Lincoln Davis. Um, and you know, shout out to you guys for putting. Uh, I, sh- <coughs> I shouted them out on the radio last night as if they listened to my show. Um, but uh, the, the, the work they did was fantastic. You know, it was well organised. There was live music. There was beer. There was gin. There was so much going on, and it was really fantastic. And everyone was well behaved. There was nobody larry. Um, and I got some amazing interviews. I can't wait to release them. I've, I've listened back to some of them. I saw I saw some of the the ladies from the the playground at school. And they were like, oh my God, it's you. And I was like, oh my God, it's you. And we had this amazing interview. It was really good. And it was just, the feeling there was just so positive. It is so it is. positive. Yeah. And I was just like, why can't we do more of this? Please, just, you know. Because people are scared of entering a church in case it has religious connotations or they'll walk through and almost apologise that they don't necessarily have strong Christian beliefs, yeah, yeah. but they'd really like to look at the roof of. Yeah. Uh, it, it's that, and I, and I think that it has to almost be separated a little bit if that's what people want. Don't, don't you agree? I mean, not totally, and I'm not, I promise you, I'm not saying let's totally throw out religion from... I'm not saying that, but if we're going to keep this amazing community of churches and the history alive, people have to understand that they can walk in and not apologise for their lack of belief, maybe. I I, I find it staggering how I think, certainly my my children, you take them to a castle and they used to run right. They loved it. It was Robin Hood moments. It was was absolutely tremendous because castles have this appeal that's been, dare I say, it's been Hollywooded. And that's yeah. what they were. But actually, castles were the big stick. They were the police. And if you stepped out of line, you got a bit of a thumping, or even worse, yeah. they were there to protect an area. Yet where people actually came and played and worshipped and enjoyed markets and functions and dances were the church, because that was a community yeah. venue. And that's how it worked. And the only time I've ever seen that presented in, in a particular Hollywood film was um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, where you actually have a fantastic shot. Kevin Costner, eh? Yeah, inside the cathedral um, with Maid Marian. And all of a sudden, you can actually see the reality of the church. You can see her actually with a perfumed handkerchief to her nose because the Great Unwashed, the reason you were called the Great Unwashed, you might have a bath twice a year. Yeah. And it's where that fantastic saying comes from, to throw the baby out with the bath water, because when bath day came, dad came in first and washed, then the sons in order, then mum, then the daughters, and the last person to go through that bath was the baby. You can imagine how grubby it must have been by then. But we didn't have various types of deodorants and lovely <laughs> perfumes. We, we did smell. So another reason why you have incense burning in the churches was to smell. mask the smell, plus the magic of what was going on. But that's what church is about. They're, yeah. they're almost their theatres. You can look at the building and actually say, it is a bit of a theatre. It's a wonderful theatre. <clears throat> but belief is down to what you want to believe in. Yes. Everybody has a belief of some shape or yes, form. Yes, we do, yeah. But perhaps as a society these days, we prefer to do it somewhere quietly. There, there isn't a need for us to congregate as a body. That's fine. That, that's people's. That's As an organisation, that, that's not what we're into. What we're into is how do you save and yep. preserve these fantastic buildings that have got, as in St Mary's, 1,200 years of history for the next generations? Or do we simply want to walk away from them and just no, let them rot? we absolutely shouldn't. And you've just said something really interesting. I pay a lot of money to feed my son's obsession with castles. Um, only a couple of weeks ago, we were at Warwick Castle. Um, Great and place. Then it's an, it, isn't it amazing? Mm. Um, you know, we're Paris Castle, Czech Castle. And you don't think twice about going, I mean, my son just loves it. And yet this has the so much incredible arc, as much, if not more, than a castle ruin. Um, and yet he wouldn't jump with joy. So we need that jump of joy, don't we? You, you do. It's that new style of engagement. And I, and I think even with the living church, the Church of England's going back to this very slowly in where they're removing pews from the buildings and actually introducing the community uh, to aspect about that, the of the Abbey, it. Yes, yes. And, and because they can see they've got to go back 
and start <coughs> really engaging with the communities. And one way of doing that is actually, well, yep, these pews are fantastic. If, again, going back through history, the reason that pews were put into a church is because you paid to sit on it. Prior to that, every, everybody sat, or, or stood, I should say. But then all of a sudden it was, well, how can we make some money? Well, if we put some pews in, right. people can sit on it. Roll up, roll up. And the yeah. closer, closer to the front you are, the more money you pay for it. So it was a way of income generation. Now we're going back, well, yeah, but we've got to re-engage with a community use. How do we do it? Well, let's get rid of some of the pews, make an open space, and we can have events back in. And it mm. becomes a community space again, which is fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, you know, it's always, a, it's always really awkward when you... You, know, you go to a wedding uh, or some sort of a christening or something and, and your family's one side and you're this side and you can't sit next to him because <laughs> I'll just sit at the back I'll sit at the back <laughs> um, community values are really important you know and there was a lot there are lots that can be lost if we're not, if we're not you know active in telling the stories uh, that, that that might just disappear one day and this is something we've been working on for the last few weeks um i want to be vague about what we're talking about but we are working on something very very special that's right it it is it's um it comes back something i'm passionate about is telling stories yes and it's not just a church that can tell stories it's the town it sits in yeah it's local people what's gone on on street corners they are fascinated and i think so many people actually enjoy that it's it's amazing you know it i we have volunteers at St. Mary's who meet and greet, dare I say, the best part of 74,000 visitors a year. Wow. And you can actually cause them to go into meltdown if you start reading off the numbers of the build of the building. But you tell them an interesting story and you can see their little eyes light up. They found it intriguing. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't realise that that was allowed to go on. And it's the same on street corners. It's fantastic. I mean, the classic example, and it's a well-known story, opposite St. Mary's, on the opposite side of the road, was an antique shop. Now, Queen Mary used to come and visit her brother, who lived um, in the area. And during that period, she had a habit of stopping the car and going into this antique shop. And during that period, if a member of royalty said, oh, I admire that, you were obliged to give it as a gift. So the antique shop owner eventually got so fed up of this he actually tipped off the railway station, one of the ports of the railway station, to come up and tell him when Queen Mary would arrive. And he put the boards up on the outside of the shop. <laughs> but it's those fabulous stories that every town has. But they're disappearing into history. Yeah. Who's remembering them? And if once yeah. they've gone, you've lost <coughs> so much, and we don't want to be there. It's part it's of our so history. sorry, Robert, we both... Yeah, <laughs> it's OK, I'll edit this out. Cough break, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really healthy now. It's <laughs> left with this annoying tickle. Mm, <clears throat> it's a nightmare. Um, you know, uh, when we did the, the so stories for Old St. Chad of, Ma- of Maggie Love, who I adore, by the way. Thank you for that, Maggie. And uh, she told us about the, the, is it the roof tiler that burnt down uh, the, yeah. the cop? Um, burnt, set fire to all the roofs on, on, on Wild Cop. And, right. and was so distraught and so embarrassed he, he committed, committed suicide, suicide jumped yeah. in the river because he, he, oh was, he was scared of what the town folk would say and do oh, I mean yeah. he had a good point yeah, he most likely didn't have yeah. any public liability no, no. <laughs> <laughs> are you a roofer in the 17th century <laughs> have you got liability insurance there are some incredible stories about Shrewsbury though right I think um, we've got a book at home there it's not horrible histories of Shrewsbury but it, I can't remember what it's called one of you guys probably will and it's tells all the little horror films about that guy that they thought was the maid thought was dead in the lion hotel all right do you not know this one no no oh i'll lend you the book and yes then please you can do pass it on. I think we need to have a look um, at this one <laughs> so the maid in the lion hotel went to clean a room the guy in the bed was dead there was no id on him and uh, so he got buried in you know the churchyard Oh, yes. Um, that's near that? Yeah, St. Yeah. Ottawa's, yeah. Yes, yeah. And um, they didn't they leave a bell or they heard, I don't know, he was buried and anyway, somebody heard noises and kept reporting that, look, there are noises coming. And um, after the third day, the people who were, you know, had the, uh, the say were like, OK, you're right, there are noises. We should do something about digging this grave up. But of course he was dead. But there are all scratch marks on the inside of the coffin, and it's a yeah, it's a true story. Oh my gosh! And it's in that, and the the book is incredible. 
I'll go home, find out the title, and let you, you guys know. I'd it, love to know who wrote brilliant. that. I'd love to find out who wrote yeah, that. Yeah, because it's, it's not a tiny leaflet. It's quite a substantial book about the horrible If you are streets. responsible for writing said book, please get in touch with us. Uh, yeah. Shootingbiscuitpodcast at gmail.com. Um, <laughs> um, um, so... This this idea that me and Robert were talking about is sort of like snowballed, and um, we're working on on three ideas. Um, I, I've I've been very vocal about it, and I'm not going to I'm not going like what I'm going to be talking about is connecting the Shrewsbury sellers with a series of vlogs. <laughs> Robert's you like, won't go to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the reason I tell you is because I, I'd like if you want to help out, if you have a seller of particular in, interest in Shrewsbury, get in touch because um, I want to I want to bring some cameras down there. We got people involved. Are we going to make um, a series oh, of fi- seller. seller like not, not like a seller in right. two for a five a darling two for a five <laughs> not all well, of them, you know. just for the people that also needed that clearing up seller with a C not an seller S, with a C, yeah, right? That's right yeah. Okay. Diction, Whiteley. Diction. We need to work on this one. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really important because these things don't get seen, right? And people will walk past. I mean, people walk past St Mary's and probably never even been in here. People, you know, these most big extravagant buildings. But never mind. I don't know a shop that's got a medieval cellar there that's been trading for thirty-five yeah. years quietly. Do you know what I mean? It, it's telling the story again. Is it? We're back to storytelling all the time. Yes. It's that history. Yes. And it's making sure that it's recorded. Yes. You know, too much of Shrewsbury has disappeared under modern concrete, which is a great mm. shame. So many of the, the, the wonderful timber, the Elizabeth, Elizabethan timber buildings that we had are, mm. are totally gone. And the stories and the history that's linked to that has been lost with it. And the cellars, or uh, as in under a house, the basement for our American <laughs> friends, is a case of, look, this is part of Shrewsbury's history record it or lose it and it, the same applies to its historic buildings how much do we value these buildings and these areas you know what what value on a scale of one to ten would you put on your local church that dates back a thousand years yeah, yeah. There, are, there are places where you can't get to and we want to we want to show you those places as well i mean like you could freely go to see the, the basement uh, the cellar should i say um at the old mcdonald's on pride hill but you can't at the moment because it's owned by hubs right but they have this amazing cellar that was literally dug into so cool. the town walls mm. you know they dug into the town walls they put pillars on top of it and they build a building on top of it I was, I was chatting to Nigel Baker yesterday I don't know that I, I believe one, <laughs> of the, one of the first parliaments was held there as well I'm really? sorry yeah. what? yeah I believe one of the very well, first well, parliaments was held in there in that basement the basement of our old McDonald's yep yeah. That's insane. I am loving talking yeah, to you. Be, this is amazing. If you stand on the riverside and look up above that car park area, yeah. you can actually see where it's built into the town walls and you can still right, see the yes. external walls. Be absolutely fantastic. Dare I say it's where the theatre should have been built because you imagine if that was the fall, mm. the frontage Gosh, for the theatre. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really interesting. Can I just add, I'll be not going down to any cellars with you. I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> oh, really? Can I just, like... You sure? I think that'll make for great viewing, though. Oh, my gosh, it could be, like, Shrewsbury's most haunted. Honestly, I can scream. But this is the idea, right? Let's make noise and get people out there looking at these things, you know? If you give me a very powerful head torch and bodyguards either side, then I'll I'll come down into a a cellar stroke basement with you. But that's it. (laughs) How's about Chris Shirk? Chris Shirk will be do. He says Shrewsbury for me or not. We'll We'll do with him. Yeah. Go for it, go for it. <laughs> okay. Until Chris you've experienced Shirk, I it. I do. I didn't even used to like going into the cellar in my own house. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, we, had a, we had a spooky cellar where I grew oh, up. Oh, you see? That's not going to help. That was in Wrexham. It was above... Um, it was like an I old miner's see. house. Right. And it was three houses that used to be one big one. And apparently there was a, a maid that used to... That was seen many times in the cell. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, and the idea of all this, and we're doing some more voice tours as well. We're doing four Darwin. I'm doing four Darwin themed and four significant landmarks or areas of, of Shrewsbury, and it's all been in, it's in the works. That's all I'm going to say, and I'm not going to say any more. Um, Robert's like you've pretty much just told him everything. I was going to say, Alex, you, you, you're almost telling it now. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm going to I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Do we need to drop the mic? Yeah, well, I just want to tell people that we're working on something very nice, very nice. I'm and it's, really it's excited. Be, yeah, this yeah. is yeah. the first time. There's a lot admit. more into it that I can't talk about, but yeah, we're working on something. Good. I'm really excited about it. No, that's good. That's good. I, th- I think it's going to be completely different for the town. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so too. I think it's it's all about getting people out there and excited about history. Um, and, and we're, we're going to be incorporating technology and stuff with this, which would be good. So, um, you know, what so what made you want to do this, though, with, the, with you know, getting people out there, talking about stories? What was the drive there for you? What, I, I think it's something we go back to um, when I was a small boy. It, it sounds ridiculous. My, my ambition was to become an archaeologist, but I went to the wrong school. Um, but hey, you know, but it was still there. But it's that history the element. I just love exploring. And it, it's churches, you know, all right, I'm, I'm being a bit one sided here at the moment because I'm just referring to churches. But they are really, really interesting places to explore and what they can reveal historically. And it, it was a case of, right, how do I, I. I had a fantastic career. In fact, I had two previous careers. And this is the last one heading up towards pensionable age and you have to roll on oh you've got um, ages yet. but but it is a case of you know I, I was lucky enough to be able to get into the church's conservation trust and, and, and i'm here and I, and I just go to different buildings and it's just stimulating that interest all the time you spot something different and what's really wonderful is sometimes you get very knowledgeable people come in and they're telling you stuff and you're going oh i, I, I had no idea that was in here is it, no hard, is it hard to, uh, <clears throat> to look through all the noise? Because there must be loads of conflict in stories over the years. Is it hard to see that what's, what's real, what's kind of maybe a fabrication? You know? it, it, there, there's always going to be, um, shall we say, um, any good story uh, is stretched a little. Mm. So you've got to trim it back a little bit. But usually if you dig into the archives, you can find that there's a fantastic origin to it, which is very close to the knuckle. It is a little like, again, sorry, I'm going to refer to St. Mary's. On the south side of the church, it looks as though a cat's gone along the outside of the wall and put vertical scratches in the side. Now, we believe, and I use that phrase loosely, but we believe during the medieval period, the men of the town, every Sunday, would be obliged to practice their archery. And they'd come to where St. Mary's is today, the wonderful former hospital that's there now didn't exist. It was open space, you had the town walls, so the men would practice their archery firing off the town walls to targets set on the other side of the river where the gay men of football ground used to be. But they'd be told to sharpen their arrows. Ah. And they'd come to the side of the church and they'd just use the side of the church to sharpen their edge of their blades. Equally, there's another story that you were never allowed to bring a sharp blade into a church. Well, having paid a lot of money for a sharp blade, you're not going to blunt the edge, I'm afraid. So we're, we're going with it's the arrows being <laughs> sharp, yeah. and the kids love it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, you, again, it's a period where it becomes a hobby. You get one afternoon off, but actually you haven't got the afternoon off because you've got to, you're obliged to do your archery practice. But they turn it into fun and games. Mm. It's that period. It's that. I want to do history. archery practice fire arrows across a river that sounds yeah. really fun well, I, I think is it Shrewsbury still um, can shoot a Welshman after the toll in I, the toll I yeah. have told my mum and my stepdad yeah. this they're yeah. Welsh my, my kids are <laughs> yes it worries me as well I must be but I'm, I'm glad to say that the toll in Bale is actually in the bell tower here and nobody can get to that rope other than me, so it's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> and, of course, you've got the famous tightrope artist as well. We have Cadman, bless him, yes, yeah, the circus performer of his day. Um, he was known as the Acris of St Paul's. What he would do, he would tie a rope to a bell frame in a church and then take it down to ground level. He would walk up the rope, reciting poetry, shooting pistols, performing tricks. He'd get to the top, and then he'd put a board on his chest with a groove in it, zip wire down this blowing a trumpet and initially he was known as the Icarus of St Paul's because the first time he performed this trick was at St Paul's Cathedral in London tragically on this occasion in Shrewsbury we have a frost fair, the river is frozen you've got everything going on in the river, it's his party trick it's how he supplements his earning on this particular morning he tightens the rope he comes up it, not a problem, gets to the top, puts the board in his chest, starts to slide down, gets more or less to where the town wall was, and the rope snaps, and he plunges to his death. Rather unfortunate. However, his wife hears the screams and the cries and instantly turns her report into widow and orphans to support and retires a wealthy lady to Leicestershire. We believe Robert is buried underneath the forecourt to the entrance to the church. He was given a free burial. 
But hey, wow. what a fantastic... Could we recreate it one day? I think my conservation manager would have a blue fit. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> when you want to do what now, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> you do realise there was a plaque outside talking about how a guy died trying this. That's not... That's Wouldn't not. a Shrewsbury Horrible <clears throat> Histories <sighs> weekend be amazing? But that's what these things spark, isn't it? It sparks yeah. interest. You, know? yep. you start talking about one thing, you lead to another. Seriously, who needs Netflix when you've got a guy on a rope and a board playing a trumpet um, exactly. while hurtling to his death. Why, why isn't Hollywood here making the film? I have no idea. So I mean, we, we've had a Christmas we carol Hollywood. recorded in the town. Come on, let's yeah. have another one, please. Yes, let's do it. I mean, uh, Hollywood does come a-knocking around here now and again, you know, because of the the, the, sort of, uh, the prison gets filmed yes. a yes. lot. Yes. Yeah. You know? um, uh, it's, it's a great place. And, you know, uh, if you have an interesting story or, or some sort of myth law that's attached to your family maybe you've got some old photos something to back that up get in touch with us because we'd love to hear off of you we would love to do that we're, we're actually working on a project in the church at the moment we're going to have um, a freestanding TV and we want to chart the history of people's association with the building so if for argument's sake you were married here your grandparents whatever if you've got some little bit of archival evidence oh, a nice. photograph and just explain in some brief notes, we will actually put that on so it can be seen Amazing. by the hordes that visit the church. But again, it comes back, it's that community involvement, it's that storytelling that we're so passionate about. Be part of it, join us. <laughs> I have to admit, you guys have got me on this one. I think I've sent this whole interview with my hands clasped his, with excitement because this is amazing. Here's how I do things, right? Amy was like, so what are we doing today? Because I haven't really told you anything, have I? Uh, nothing, nothing. When Jules joined the biscuit, we did that as well. Um, she turned up, she's like, what are we doing? Are we talking about the Beatles? Are we? Okay, right, and then go. Um, because I feel like if Amy's learning about what we're talking about then so is the listener and that's not yeah. being me sort of looking down on you I feel like that's great I don't and, think of it. yeah I wouldn't and think your that. mind's just gone because yeah. yes we sat in St Mary's and, and you know what we've got these ideas that we think is going to really just generate so much interest in the town and that's what we're here for that's what we're here for oh gosh yeah. it's, it's about promoting the town the yeah. town is absolutely tremendously important during, mm. again we, we go back in history it was a strategic place mm. in the country and, and it needs that history there so people can actually learn about it and understand how important the town was history and pride uh, very I much pride, very much pride. hand in hand it, it does really, yeah. Yeah. yeah there's also the story about um the spire falling here right that's the, yes the Charles Darwin. yeah it's um 1891 um the spire is um in need of repair and it's covered with scaffolding or scaffolding of the day unfortunately it catches the tail end of um, some severe winds and the scaffolding knocks upon the tip of the spire and knocks the top 30 feet of it straight through the middle of the nave. Oops. The priest of the day or the vicar of the day uses it to great effect because at the time a statue to Darwin is being created, spreads his arms wide and apparently is reputed to have said, see what happens when you cease to believe. Ooh. The following week the church is full. Um, but then, of course, the penny drops and, whoa, hang on, spire, scaffolding, wind. No, that's not quite an act of God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's, the same, that's the same statue that sits outside the library now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there we go. Interesting stories again. Look, yeah. There's so much going on. Um, Robert, thank you so much for chatting. You're more than welcome. Oh, this is the end? You, you can carry on by all means if there's anything you want to add or if you have any questions. No, it's just... Your mind is blown. I can see it right in front of you. Yeah, yeah. I think that, um, <laughs> Hell of that I moved to Shrewsbury and I moved to Shrewsbury and I walked past, there's a nice building and then I carry on with my shopping. Yes. And yeah, I, I, I just... Yeah, I don't think this will be the last time I talk to you guys about this. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, I think it's intriguing because if you live in a town, you tend not to really spot your heritage. No, you're right. But yeah. then, I mean, we get no end of locals who come in and go, wow, I didn't realise it was this big inside. And you go, well, it's a bit like the TARDIS. You know, the minute you open that door, you think, mm. gosh, where did all that come from? Yeah. But it's, you tend to miss it. But then again, I mean, we love it. Um, we, we get a lot of American tourists, and they come and they go, wow, how old is the church? Yeah. And we go, well, this bit's 1150, that's 1170, this is 1220, that's 1362, that's 1425. And we've lost them. 
Yeah. And we say, the heating system's 1861, American Civil War, no, we've still lost you. <laughs> and then we point to this plaque that commemorates the Shropshire Regiment, the 53rd Regiment of Foot, that amalgamates with the 85th, Afghanistan, 1879, all those that rather perished, unfortunately, primarily due to disease, but it has the Battle on a Bladensburg, which dates from the Continental War of 1812, where the Americans burned down chunks of Canada, and we burnt the White House. The flag is still one of the flags from that is, st- is, is in our castle right now. You can actually go and see that. Right. Yeah. But the lovely thing behind that, the report we get to that, well, why didn't you come and do it? Well, Bush was in there. <laughs> <laughs> or Obama. Or, you know, no, that's politics. No, no, We're not no, 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 but, it, but it's fantastic. You know, all of a sudden, you've got a completely new conversation going on. Yeah. And it's really interesting what develops out of that. Yeah, and it is really good that you can then have lunch and a nice cup of tea. Oh, gosh, yeah, very <laughs> much. No, 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 we've got to plug the cafe, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> Riverview Cafe, um, because obviously <coughs> me so and Amy sorry. have had many a coffee at the Riverview across the, at the parade there, and they brought yeah. their business here and put it into... They the, have. Yeah, it. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. I don't have to walk very far now for a decent cup of coffee, <laughs> which is a bonus for me. Yeah, and the food there is it's amazing as well. I've, I've oh, sat and had many lunch together. Oh, gosh, yes. talk about <laughs> <laughs> and then I go home and tell my wife. And she said, "What do you have for lunch?" Oh, I didn't have much. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I heard you were with Alex. <laughs> 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 um, this is all about history, and you know, one of the things that struck me uh, over the last couple of weeks is while we're planning mm-hmm. all this, I'm speaking to so many people, um, you know, tour guides and historians and archaeologists. I'm speaking to so many people about planning this, and one of the things that struck me is that there is a certain um, drop off when it comes to age, when it comes to tour guides and people that understand this history. And I'm like, if the likes of these people that are going out and doing these tours are gone. What's the younger? There's no younger generation out there to sort of appreciate the history. We've got to do something to spark interest in history in our local town. Otherwise, it's going to disappear. It'll be in books that people aren't going to read. Oh, it is, and this is this is why we're going to look at um, a tech side of delivery. Yes, technology, uh, baby. And it, I mean, this is where a younger audience, um, those who want to engage in something, can say, "Yeah, engage with it, but deliver it in your way." Yeah. You know, there's some fantastic technology today. Come and talk with us. Come and explain how you feel a tour could be created mm. and delivered in the town. Let, let's listen to you. You tell us instead of us turning around and saying, well, this is what we're I think, going um, to do. We're almost gone full circle, haven't we, from yeah, we the have. beginning? But Welcome I think the beginning of the show, that, guys. Um, the des- <laughs> yeah, yeah, not the beginning of creation. Um, <laughs> again, our children are quite Hollywooded. There's yep. very little... I mean, my, my children have got imagination... But they don't have to use it very much because there's a hundred and what? No, more than a hundred TV channels to never allow you to use your own imagination. So I think that we would have to get children to kind of Hollywood it a little bit, yep. to Xbox it a little bit, to, to you know, bring in some YouTubers. To, yeah, yeah, to te- make mm. it really cool like ollie love my son loves youtubers he just yeah. like if yeah, he sees a few around here and he's like my mum, my mum is mm-hmm. a youtuber so yeah if we could make it cooler and i don't mean that it needs to lose its integrity but our children are the ones that are going to tell their children and their children and it it's about adapting isn't on. it it's about adapting and yeah. finding yeah. new new fresh ways to try and invigorate and, and, and inspire history. I mean maybe the university is a good ch- place to look and look for any sort of history students that might want to sort of step into the you know you know while they're doing their degree or maybe afterwards they can come and mm. do some tour guides and it, or know. maybe we should get a group of Young kids. Maybe we can speak to Do Chris a podcast Hemsworth. Of children. Um. Yeah, Chris, can we borrow you? Um, but also, why don't we do a podcast one day with a bunch of cool kids like this in here and mm. get them to look up and tell us? I'm going to speak to Claire from Lovely Land. I think she'd be great. Bring some of the young people to work yeah. with her and we could talk about the history of the town and see what we can do. I think it'd be an absolute great yeah. way to start. It really Sorry, Claire, to name drop you, by the way, if you're listening to this. Yeah. So I, like <laughs> the... I saw her the other day at Drawn. I was like, oh, I need to do some stuff with Claire because she's amazing what she does. Um, big shout out to the guys at Lovely Land there, um, encouraging kids to go out there and look after their local environment. I love it. Um, Robert, you're amazing and I love chatting to you about this. Amy, 
I love chatting to you too. Oh, thanks. I love chatting welcome. to you. I've loved today. I've loved it too. Oh, by the way, I need to tell you guys about the thing I'm doing for Mind. Did you see <laughs> see that <laughs> thing? I was just like, I was, I was at work. I've done all my paperwork. I'm waiting for my colleagues to come in and I'm scrolling on Facebook and there's this thing and it's Mind the charity and it pops up with streamers needed. I was like, kind of a streamer <laughs> and they're encouraging people to do x amount of so they can do like 5 15 or 23 hours worth of streaming over a month period so not like we did at pod aid i'm not going to do 23 straight hours again i'm not going to do that till pod aid but i decided uh, to raise awareness for mental health raise a bit of money as well yep. for the charity that i'm going to um i'm going to record every single day for an hour, an hour at least throughout the whole of february i thought it'd be really, quite a really cool thing to do so yeah. 10 o'clock every morning i bring like I've, um, i asked my wife for a name i was like what, what can we call this she goes mind on biscuits i was like ah oh, it's perfect mind no, on biscuits that's cool uh, so i don't know but, but uh, if you guys i'm i'm looking for people that are specialists in mental health some uh, inspiring insp- in, inspirational um you know people that can get up get people to get up and go and feel good about themselves yeah. if you want to get involved we've got 23 shows to plan <laughs> so, that yeah. sounds like a brilliant idea and i think it's needed as well yeah yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw a comment on on facebook the other day somebody going i wish they'd stop going on about mental health i was like no I'm actually going to speak about this louder now just to drown you out of your <laughs> ignorance, you know. Let's talk about it even more because it's, it needs yeah. to be. There's a lot of... But so we use the word ignorance as an insult sometimes. Sometimes it is just lack of knowledge. Yeah, and that's what Isn't we... Isn't it? Yeah, so yeah that's it's what not that do. people are meaning to be rude. Um, in, in that circumstance, it's kind of like, well, you don't understand it. There's no point in shutting the door. Let's Absolutely. open the door. Look, go and find out about it. And here's how you can find out about it. Yeah. Alex White and his, <laughs> his biscuits <laughs> stuff. Um, but yeah, this is what we want to do. Um, so pay attention to that. We're, we're going to get a, a, like a crowd. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We spoke about this, didn't yeah. we? We're all in on this. So, you know, one way or another, we'll bring an hour show to you every single day of February. Even if it's me wandering around on my phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's my birthday in February, Ooh, so I may not be available on one of those. My mum's got a birthday in February as well, and there's the Darwin Festival as well that's going on. So I'll be I'll be very busy. Yes, for February. Yeah, yeah, of course it will be. Yeah, um, so, yeah. no good um, stuff. Amy, you've got anything to add before we get out of here? I haven't. No, um, I could talk for hours, so I will just stop. No, <laughs> I have nothing to add apart from Robert. It, this has been an absolute pleasure. No, you've been more than welcome. More um, than welcome. How can the listeners help? or contact or follow you guys um basically uh you can have a look at our webpage which is uh, visit churches.org um we put an awful lot on there but equally just come in and speak to us at st mary's very friendly bunch of guys yeah. very friendly all right we'll get out of here then thank you very much for listening guys and we will catch you next time peace out <laughs>